Hello guys, it's me again, Julius, on English World. And this is our episode two. You know what? I'm very excited because as we go along, I'm very sure that you guys are going to learn more techniques, more ways of expressing yourselves in English. Now, if you remember, in our previous episode, you had learned how to introduce yourselves in five different ways. Now, could you tell me something about yourself? Look at the bottom of the screen. Could you tell me something about yourself? I guess you know how to answer that, right? So that's just a recap. Just keep practicing. It doesn't matter if you do it every day, as long as you keep going and uh, memorize a lot of scripted speech, even though it's a scripted speech, it's like a song. If you memorize the lyrics, you memorize the scripted speech of how you introduce yourself, it's still good. Remember when you were children, when you were little kids, our parents would teach us how to talk, introduce ourselves uh, you know, at school, and we memorize it. Don't you remember that? They were like, my name is Julius. I'm five years old. I live in Cebu City, Philippines. When I grow up, I want to become a doctor. Right? So it's just like the song. Now, in this episode, we are going to practice how to talk about your family. It's going to be the same thing, just like the previous episode. So here we go. We are going to practice talking about your family in five different ways. Now, here, let's take a look. We have 10 possible expressions to ask or request for the native speaker, the native English speaker. Let's collect like 10 possible expressions that a native English speaker might ask or request you, like how you are going to talk about your family. Let's do it. Number one, please tell us about your family. So if you're in a classroom, let's say for example, you're in a classroom, your classmates are there, your teacher's there, and the teacher wants you to tell T talk about your family and he wants to include the students as part of you know the receiving of the information then he may say please tell us about your family but if he wants the authority just you know like just about him or her then the teacher may say please tell me about your family or tell us about your family you understand that take a look at the bottom of the screen please tell us about your family Please tell us about your family. Be familiar with that sound. Number two, tell me about your family. See that? Now it's just a teacher asking you or requesting you to talk about your family. If it's uh, like a, a job interview or uh, maybe another situation, not in a classroom, it still is um, very applicable. Like, tell me about your family. Or just your friend. If you're trying to get to know someone, you know, it's very useful to say this expression. Tell me about your family. It's just saying, please tell me about your family. Just without the please. You know, you don't really have to say please all the time. You can say it, you know, you can be soft spoken or say it gently to the person you're talking to. Or, you know, that person may be saying it to you in a very polite way. Just, you know, with the right tone. Just saying, uh, tell me about your family. Could be, uh, it can be. Tell me about your family. It's just be familiar with the sound. It's very important, guys, that you know what the native English speaker is going to say at you, say to you, say back at you. You know. Okay, now let's go to number three. Tell me all about your family. Tell me all about your family. Look at the bottom of the screen. 
tell me all about your family. You know, they may put, please, please tell me all about your family. But just be familiar with that sound. Tell me all about your family. Okay, now let's go to number four. Let's, let's say we are a group and we would love to hear your story or your information about your family. Then I can say, tell us about your family. Tell us about your family. Tell us about your family. Be familiar with the sound. Now, next one we have, tell us. Oh, no, we have, uh, why don't you talk about your family? Why don't you talk about your family? Hey, um, why don't you talk about your family? See, it's asking why, but it's actually a request. Like, tell us about your family. You know, want to share some stories about your family, especially when you're trying to make friends with new people or if you're at school, or for kids, children watching this episode, um, you can tell your friends, or your American friends, or English-speaking friend, like, uh, you know, you, you may get that kind of a request. Like, hey, why don't you tell us about your family? Or your teacher might say that, like, um, you know, why don't you tell us about your family? Okay, next one we have, why don't you tell me more about your family? So just be familiar with that sound. Why don't you tell me about your family? Can you just tell us something about your family? Uh, why don't you tell me more about your family? Just more, more information about your family. For example, uh, your mother's favorite food, your mother's favorite color, your father's favorite dish, favorite uh, sport. Uh, what? what else? Favorite book? Do you have sisters? Do you have brothers? How old are your sisters? How old are your brothers? Uh, what do they like to do uh, during their free time? Their hobbies, favorite color, favorite food. Um, do they like traveling? Do the do they like watching movies? Stuff like that. So easy. So just be familiar with the sound. And remember, in this episode, the point here is just for you to talk about your family in five different ways. And don't worry. After the ten possible expressions that you might hear from a native English speaker. All you need to do is just talk about your family. And we have five styles here. Now, as we continue, we have number eight. Now, we're going to be using could. It's very polite, you know, because it goes like this. Could you tell me more about your family? Or we have, could you tell me about your family? Could you tell me about your family? Okay, then you, you can also say, could you tell me about your family? And we have, could you tell us about your family? Could you tell us about your family? Like for, your, your, for example, you're a transferee, you're a new student here and you've just entered the classroom and I want you to introduce yourself and or talk about your family to your classmates, then if, if I, for example, I'm your teacher, then I can say this one. Uh, could you tell us about your family? Tell me your teacher, also your classmates, because we would like to get to know you, you more and your family, what they like to do, all about you. Right? So it's so so easy because the focus here is just about you. From the first step, from the from the previous episode, it was about you introducing yourself, talking about yourself your likes, favorites, all about you, your age, your location, uh, what city you're in, or uh, where, you're, where you're from. And but this one, you're, you're going to have to talk about your family. Next one we have, number 10, you've got a family, right? Now, this is a little bit advanced, but I need you to learn this one because you never know. Maybe um, after this year, you could be traveling uh, in America, in, in the U.S. or in in the U.K., in Australia, in, in Canada, and you just encounter a native English speaker, or even, you know, like me, a Filipino who's fluent in English, uh, they could be using this kind of expression, like, hey, you've, got family. you've got a family, right? Do you mind sharing? Check the bottom of the screen. It goes like this. 
Uh, you've got family, right? Do you mind sharing? Do you mind sharing? It means tell me about your family. It's the same thing. So you won't have any problems with that. In the future, if you hear that kind of expression, hey, you mind sharing stories about your family? Do you mind sharing stories about your family? It means, is it okay for you to talk about your family? Can you tell me about your family? Could you tell me about your family, please? Please tell me about your family. Tell us something about your family. It's all the same. Different styles, different sentences. But the point is, that person, that native English speaker is just asking you or requesting you to talk about your family. See? You won't have any problems at all. All the same. Just, just be familiar with the sound. That's the most important part there. Be familiar. What do you mean by familiar? You have to be able to know that sound. Like when you hear it, ah, I know that sound. It's just asking me about my family. Could you tell us, could you tell us about your family? Uh, could you tell me more about your family? Uh, you've, got, you've got a family, right? Do you mind sharing? Uh, you want to talk about your family? It's all the same. Now, let's try style number one. Are you ready? Now, look at the screen. Here we go. I have four brothers and a sister. The eldest is married. He has three children. They live in Cebu City. He works at a call center. He is also a licensed broker. He is 44 years old. He loves biking, cooking, and going out with his family. He's a very smart guy. He is very good at math. Now I'm talking about uh, my elder brother, the eldest brother I have. So, see, it's okay to memorize that. Maybe at first uh, it will be very difficult for you to remember it, but it's like a song. Remember this. Take note of this. It's like a song. You're just going to have to go with it. Just learn how to sing. Be with the lyrics. At first, it's very, it, would, it will be very difficult to remember it because it's not your native language. But as you keep going, just, just feel like it's a song. Just memorize it. And then one day, it, it's just going to come out naturally from, from your tongue, from the tip of your tongue. It's like, oh, um, I have a brother. He's 44 years old. He's a licensed broker. And he's a very smart guy. And he's very good at math. See, it's going to come out naturally. And also the good thing about this one, about this kind of training, is that the purpose is when you memorize these scripted speech, these scripted speeches, so when somebody asks you, like, could you tell us more about your family? You've got a family, right? Do you mind sharing stories about your family? The muscles of your tongue you know, are going to get used to these expressions, so if other people ask you about something, like for example, uh, do you have brothers? Because you've already, let's say you've already memorized it and you're like kind of like natural saying it. It's, it's going to come out naturally from the tip of your tongue. When somebody asks you, for example, you've got brother, yeah, I've got four brothers. Uh, uh, like how old is the eldest brother? Uh, he's 44. Yeah, and he works. Uh, he's a, a licensed broker. Kind of like that, right? And you won't have a problem with your grammar because you've already memorized memorized these these like these are like modeled sentences for you, and it's very useful because you may be able to use it in other situations. Like somebody asks you, like, uh, um, uh, which city uh, are you in? Which city or where do you live? Oh, I'm from Ukraine. So yeah, I'm from Odessa city, and it's a very beautiful city, actually. It's, you can just like interconnect this sentence and this sentence and then you can come up with another way of uh, uh, responding to a native English speaker. See? Because that's the technique. We're maximizing your time, uh, your way of, of becoming fluent in English in the most effective way. You understand? Okay, now let's continue. The second brother, the second elder brother is also married. He is in Manila, Philippines. He works at a law firm. He's going to become a lawyer real soon. He is 43 years old. 
He loves reading a lot of books and watching the news on the internet. He likes politics very much. He is a very smart guy. He is very good at legal counseling. My third elder brother already passed away. He was 39. He used to work as an IT engineer at a call center. He was a good brother. Now, see that?、Uh, because I have, actually, I have like,、uh, I have four brothers, but one of my brothers already passed away. What do you mean by passed away? Like, he's gone. Like, you know. Uh, another way of saying it, like、uh, he's dead, but it, like, dead is like a movie, like somebody got killed. Or, so let's just use passed away. Could you put it on the, at the bottom of the screen, please? Passed away. Okay, so he already passed away. Now I'm using here, he was a, a very good brother. Could we put it here at the bottom of the screen? Because some of you are not so familiar with past tense. Right, the tense is a verb. And here,、um, we, we're not going to waste your time like learning a lot of verbs, like the, the tense is a verb. We're just going to be using, we're going to be making it very practical. Like, why, are you, why do you need to use these modeled sentences? Because it's very practical.、Uh, you need to use this every day, and it's just going to come out naturally from the tip of your tongue. Right, for this one, my third elder brother already passed away. He was 39. Why he was? Because it's finished, he's gone. He used to work as an IT engineer at a call center. What do, you mean, what do you mean by he used to work as an IT engineer? It means before, because it's finished. So I can say something like, I used to work as a dancer at a nightclub. I used to work. Could we put it here at the bottom of the screen? I used to work as a dancer. It means before I was a dancer. And so for my brother, who already passed away, Uh, may his soul rest in peace.、Um, he used to work as an IT engineer. So, before when he was still here on earth, he was an IT engineer. See, you're going to get used to that. Like some parts of the introduction, some parts of like me telling a story about my family,、uh, some parts of it, like it's in the present. Like he is,、uh, he is a licensed broker, he works at a law firm.、Uh, my, brother, my third brother,、uh, like he already passed away, he was an IT engineer. See, it's, it's better that way when you're mixing tenses. Like this one is right now, and this one is already finished because you're going to get used to it. You know what I'm saying? Okay, but it's going to take a lot of time. Just keep practicing. You're going to get used to it. Trust me. So let's go to the next one. I'm the fourth son. So I'm the fourth son. So actually, we're five boys in the family. Five boys, right? I'm the fourth son. I don't really have to say more about me, right? Because in the first episode, I introduced myself. So here, the youngest is also here in Cebu City. He is 34 years old. He is a supervisor and a trainer at a call center company. He loves traveling the world, eating at fancy restaurants with his friends, and partying. He also likes watching movies on Netflix and on cable channels. My sister. Is in another city. She's married and has two children. She is 47 years old. She works in a government office. My father passed away nine years ago. So my father is also gone. He's also dead already. My mother is 70 years old. I take care of her. I cook for her. She loves vegan food. We watch movies together. She likes watching TV dramas on the internet and making some fabric with her crochet hook. My mom is a very sweet woman. See that? So, if you do this kind of style, guys, trust me, it's going to be quite difficult at first, but it's like learning、um, a song. Like you memorize the lyrics at first, it's going to take a while, but the muscles of your tongue. Are gonna get used to it. Then your brain, the muscles of your tongue, they're gonna work, work on it. And as you go along, you won't have any problem at all. It's just gonna come out naturally from the tip of your tongue. When somebody asks you,、uh, how old is your mom? She's, a, she's 75, and you know, my mom is a very sweet woman. Then you're just gonna realize, hey, I've become fluent, right? Because all these model sentences correctly 
grammatically correct sentences have been kind of like recorded inside your subconscious. You know, the mind is very powerful. And when it gets in there, you know, it, it will never go away. It, it's going to get stuck there. And then one day when you talk to other native English speakers, you'll just realize, hey, it's just, you know, I'm talking in English naturally. All right. Okay, now let's go to style number two, the second style. So this is shorter, not too much information. So if I get requested or if I get a request or I get asked by a native English speaker, like, uh, could you tell me about your family? Or you've got family, right? Mind sharing? It doesn't matter if, which style I use, style one, two, three, four, or five. Just like from the previous episode, if you remember, you can just use all of it. The most important thing is that you're familiar with the sound. Like, oh, uh, they're just asking me about my family. They want me to talk about my family. They, they want me to talk about my brothers, my sisters, my parents. And that's just it. Uh, no matter how different those expressions are, like when, when it comes to the words, the arrangements of the words, the sentences, it wouldn't really matter because... The most important thing there is that you understand, like, oh, they just want me. You get the point. That's it. You get the point. Oh, they just want me to talk about my family. Okay, then here it goes. You have you have your your scripted speech. You have your model in your mind. Like we have our own styles. You have your own style in expressing yourself. I have my own style in expressing myself. Let's say I like using a well. My family is is you know is very supportive of me. But your style is uh, like you know what. My family is the best. See, it's it's kind of like different when it comes to words, but the point is, in thought, it's the same. All right. Now let's go. Let's continue. Okay, I've been. I think I've been talking too much. All right. Style number three. Well, I've got a half sister who is the eldest in the family. It's a little bit different. Could we check it here at the bottom of the screen? Well, I've got a half sister who is the el who is the eldest in the family. She's married and has two kids. She works for the government. I've got two elder brothers. The eldest lives in Cebu City. He's married and has three kids. The second one lives in Manila. He works there. I had a third elder brother, but he already passed away. He was also great. The youngest works at a call center, at a call center company. He and I take care of our mother. Our father is already gone. It also means like passed away. Could we put it here at the bottom of the screen? My father is already gone. He passed away in 2012. So see, there are some added information here, but the thought is the same. He is in a better place now. My family is my home. It's quite Kind of like a coat there. My family is my home. So see, uh, the more styles you know, the better. It's just like Kung Fu. You guys know Kung Fu? Or or boxing, karate, or swimming, or playing the guitar, or playing the piano, or whatever skills you've got there. I know for sure that you, as a matter of fact, have a lot of techniques. You have a lot of, of ways of doing it. Like a, if you have two plus two is equals to four, you may also say three plus one is equals to four, right? But you ha you can't just say, oh, it's just four plus, and then the two plus two, it's four. You also have to learn three plus one is four. It's the same thing with English. You have to be familiar with a lot of expressions, especially from native English speakers like Americans, British, Australians, Canadians. You have to know their culture you have to know how they th how they say things in their daily lives because if you know it if you understand it if you're familiar with it it's very easy to talk about yourself because you know uh, way back then when you, maybe when you were in high school or grade school you've learned English you had learned English uh, from your book from school and you know you're so excited talking about yourself you feel like oh I, I can talk about it. but the problem starts when you don't understand what the native English speaker is saying to you. Like, what? What are you saying? Right? So know their culture. Embrace their culture. 
be familiar with the sound, their expressions, their accent, most importantly, just the totality of it. Okay, and you're good to go. Now, let's go to style number four. Check this out. I've got three brothers right now. Actually, they should be four brothers, but the other one already passed away. I have a half-sister who's married and has two kids. They live in another city. I take care of my mother. The youngest brother also helps me take care of our mother. He's a very good younger brother. All of us in the family love to watch movies, surf on the internet, and watch funny videos on social media. I'm, ha I'm happy I have a loving and caring family. They support me all the time. See that? It's all the same. You know, the vibration, the energy is the same. It's like, my family loves me. I love my family. My brothers and I, we love watching movies. It's all the same. But, you know, but some of you guys, you confuse yourselves by saying, what is he trying to say? Because you're trying to catch, you're trying to catch what the native speaker is telling you word for word, word for word. It doesn't have to be that way. You just have to get the thought and be familiar with the sound. Now, you might be thinking, why, is Jules keep, why does Jules keep on saying, uh, be familiar, be familiar? Because that's the way it is. You know, you have to be familiar with the sound. Uh, when a young child learns a new language, the, the child doesn't really pick uh, the language word for word. The child becomes familiar with the sound from the parents, right, to begin with. Like, oh, like, come on, sweetie, come on, honey, uh, time to eat. You know, kids are like that. So just pretend you're a child, like a sponge, you're a child, a child, and you're learning learning this new language, and it's a very great journey for you. That is the most effective way in becoming fluent in English. All right, now let's go to the next style. Here we go, style number five. Well, my family right now are my mother, brother, sister-in-law, and her daughter. My other brothers have their own families already, but we live in the same city. I have a half-sister who lives in another city. She's happily married, and I know she's very content with her life. See? So it's a little more advanced here. Just be familiar. Okay, shall we continue? Just check out the screen. It's right there. It's great because all of us love watching movies and surfing the internet. Well, I think most people these days surf the internet or their social media accounts the moment they wake up. It's the internet era anyway. So that's about my family. They're very supportive of me. I love my family very much. See, it's an, another style. Another, you hear different sentences there, right? But don't worry. The point is, it's just about my family. The energy there is, my family loves me, I love my family, they're great, you know, but yeah, yeah, of course, you have to listen to it as well, but the most important thing there is that you're familiar with the sound. Oh, Julius is talking about his family, and for me, for example, I, I am you, and I'm trying to be familiar with the sound from the native speakers, uh, if you say like, a, could you tell us about your family? Please tell us about your family. you got family, right? Got a family, right? Do you mind sharing? Could you share about your family? Share stories about your family? Oh, you know, oh, they want me to talk about my family. And it's okay. Right? Okay, now let's practice. Let's do it. Your turn. Let's try number one. You do it. Please tell us about your family. Please tell us about your family. Number two. Tell me about your family. Hey, tell me about your family. Be familiar with different sounds, different tones, and the mood. Like, uh, tell me about your family. Tell me about your family. Tell me about your family. Tell me all about your family. Tell me all about your family. Tell me all about your family. See? Different tones, different volume, different volumes. But same point, just be familiar with the sound. Next we have, uh, tell us about your family. 
hey, tell us about your family. You know, Americans are very, uh, they kind of like use this all the time. Like, hey, hey there. Hey guys, what's up? How's it going? So just get used to it. Hey, hey, hey man. Hey girl. Hey little buddy. Hey sweetie. How's it going? What's up? Hey guys, what's up? Hey, hey there. You having fun? So now we're, we can use it. We can kind of like mix it. Hey, uh, tell us about your family. Okay, good. Now, let's go to number five. Tell us all about your family. For example, you're in the classroom. You're a transferee. You're a new student. And I'm your teacher. I want you to introduce, talk about your family uh, to us, to all of us, to me, your teacher, and to your classmates. It's going to go like that. Tell us all about your family. Next we have, why don't you talk about your family? Why don't you talk about your family? Why don't you talk about your family? Be familiar with that sound. Why don't you tell me more about your family? Why don't you tell me more about your family? I'm asking you to talk more about your family. Your, your mother's favorite food, does she cook? Her hobbies, her favorite colors? Uh, her favorite TV drama series. What about your brothers, your sisters? Like more, right? Why don't you tell, talk about your family? Why don't you talk about your family? It's like asking you, like, would you rather not talk about it? Or, but actually, it's asking you to talk about your family. Why don't you talk about your family? Next one we have, why don't you tell me more about your family? Why don't you tell me more about your family? Why don't you tell me more about your family? Good. Now, next one we have, could you tell me more about your family? Please. You can add please there because could and please are quite friends. Like, could you tell me about yourself, please? Now, that's just actually too much asking. You can just say, could you tell me about yourself? Or could you tell... Tell me about your family. Could you talk about your family? If I add please, it, it makes it a little more, a little, you know, kind of like sweeter. <laughs> you, but, you know, not, not really so much of that. But you, you, you may add please if you like. As you please. Uh, could you tell me about your family, please? Could you tell me about your family? Now you do it. You do it. Talk about your family. Tell me about your family. Okay, number nine. Could you tell us about your family? Could you tell us about your family? Could you tell us about your family? It's all the same. You may choose from style one, style two, style three, style four, and style five. Or if you have more styles in mind and you compose it, just make sure it's grammatically correct. Or if you've been watching Hollywood movies, American movies, English movies, and you're familiar with the sound, their, the, the grammar, the kind of expressions they, they use every day, everyday lives, their daily lives. Just, you know, it's so easy. Just copy it. Just mimic, copy. Just get, don't, you know, don't be, how do you say this one? Like, uh, do not make sentences from your language and then trying to translate it in English. It's going to sound very strange. So if I were you, uh, you know, it's better to just be, to just copy, mimic them. Just like children. You know, how they learn, how they become fluent uh, in a certain language. It's because they listen. Okay. And number 10. You've got a family, right? Do you mind sharing? Or you, sometimes that you, you can hear people, native English speakers, they might say something like, uh, why don't you share something about your family? Why don't you share, uh, share with us? Uh, about your family story. Why don't you share with us um, your family? You need to tell us something about your family. It's all the same, right? So easy. 10 different expressions, possible expressions that you might get uh, from a native English speaker asking you or requesting you to talk about your family. Right? It's all the same. So it's, it's good there. Now you're familiar with it. Like, oh, I know that sound. Oh, it's just the same. It's the same thing. It's like saying hello, hi, hey, all the same. It's just a greeting like, hey there, hi there, hello there. Hey, what's up? How's it going? 
It's all the same and you get it because it's the culture. And if you know that, you can never go wrong. You just have to do your own thing when you make a res uh, reply, a respond, a response. I'm sorry. If you make a response like, uh, hey there, how's it going? Oh, I'm fine. I I'm doing great. Actually, I've been very busy with my work and I'm hoping to spend more time with you guys because uh, I think I need some time to, you know, have fun and relax. And there you go. So you've got a family, right? Do you mind sharing? So just remember, be familiar with the sound. Okay, so there you go. Now check out the styles. We have five styles here. You may practice it again and again and again until you hit it right. Now don't worry, uh, you don't really have to be perfect on it with it, but as long as you're near perfection, you're good to go. There you go. You did a great job. Now just remember, be familiar with the sound and keep watching Hollywood movies, English speaking movies, because uh, you need to embrace the culture of the English language. And uh, aside from that, enrich your vocabulary. It's very, very important. Uh, you have to know, you can start with um, things at home because you're not just improving your, your fluency in speaking and listening, also uh, writing and reading. So it's very, very important. Okay, there you go. So did you have fun with this episode? Now, remember, practice makes perfect. I'm going to see you again next time for another practice and another way of expressing yourselves in English. This has been your host, Julius, for English World. Have a good one.